Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Danny Walker and on today's episode I'll be sharing about my favorite pageant dress designers for little girls. If you're new and don't know who I am, I was Miss Montana USA 2018. I've been a pageant coach since 2008 and have had the honor of working with multiple local, state, national, and international title holders. If you want to know more about pageant coaching, you can head over to my website dannywalkerofficial.com and if you stick around till the end of this episode, I'll share about places where you can find discounts on the designers that I am about to mention. Before I mention the designers, I also want to state a little disclaimer. The styles and dresses I'm going to be talking about are for ages preteen and younger, so that typically means ages 13 or younger. Those are for divisions where they typically want them to look very young, natural, and not wear makeup. So these styles or designers might not be the best suited choices if we're talking about junior teen or teen divisions, which should be ages 13 and up. The first designer I'm gonna mention is Rachel Allen. I love them because they have a very wide variety and selection of styles and colors, ranging from pastels, whites, to jewel tones. I love that variety, and these dresses really stand out on stage. The only thing about them is that they do have a higher price point for girls dresses. So your average Rachel Allen gown is going to cost you between four to six hundred dollars and that price is comparable to what a teen or even a Miss contestant might pay for your average pageant gown. So that is something to be aware of but if you're okay with that price point this is a really really great designer to dress your daughter in. My next designer is Tiffany Princess gowns. I love these styles and what's so great is that they come at a lower price point. So your average dress is gonna cost about $300. The area that I feel that they lack is in variety of color. So most of their styles are only gonna come in a pastel and that's not always the best option for a contestant. So that's something that deters me from dressing a lot of my clients in this brand. Aside from that, the other thing is that most of their gowns come in a corset style and I always try to steer contestants away from a corset gown because it tends to break up the design of a dress. It's a bit distracting if you're doing a circle turn on stage and also it's very time consuming to lace a corset dress backstage at a pageant. So I always encourage girls if you find a Tiffany style dress that you love and it has a corset back, then just purchase that gown in a larger size and have the corset replaced with a zipper. Another gown designer that I want to mention that's just not as widely known but does really well at pageants is ritzy gowns. These are typically custom gowns which is why I don't dress a lot of my clients in them. You have to find a store that will be willing to work with ritzy dresses and create that design for you so it is a lot more time consuming. It's more of a process and of course that is going to increase increase your price point. But it could be the right choice for you if you're preparing for a national pageant and you wanted something really unique for your younger contestant. By the way, if you're loving these styles, please be sure to comment so cute in the comments below to let me know because I want to know what you guys think about these. Next, I'm going to talk about Sherry Hill. This is going to be at our upper end. Years ago, Sherry Hill did have a girl's line that she released with prices comparable to a Rachel Allen gown, but she discontinued that and she brings it back every so often. So sometimes you will find someone reselling a Sherry Hill girl's pageant gown. But the other thing about Sherry Hill is that she still offers couture dresses for very little girls. Now, if you happen to have a preteen contestant and she fits the height of an older girl's dress, then that could be a really great option for you. I do see preteen contestants wearing Sherry Hill dresses, but just make sure that when you find that perfect Sherry Hill dress that your contestant still looks like a preteen and not like a teen contestant. So you don't want to put a preteen title holder or girl in a dress that's like overly tight or form fitting. You still want to stick with styles that involve a ball gown or some kind of fullness at the bottom or even just a, a full circle skirt that is made of chiffon. Those are great styles for younger contestants. Usually it requires quite a bit of alterations, but if you don't mind taking the dress to alterations, that's an option. And if you are really willing to put down some cash, then a custom couture gown might be the right choice for you. 
even though they don't exist just yet, I want to give an honorable mention to Ashley Lauren. She is a popular designer for Teen Miss, Mrs. Ms. contestants, and now she is releasing a girl's line. That will be debuting in January 2019, so I've yet to see that full collection, but if her girl's dresses are anything like her teen or Miss dresses, it might be a really great option for the pageant stage, so keep an eye out for that collection. Lastly, I want to talk about a great option, which is a custom gown. Now this isn't something that you can do a week before your pageant typically. This is something you do when you have time to really plan and prepare and put thought into what you're going to be wearing. So some designers, even though they specialize in Miss gowns, they will create dresses or wardrobe for younger contestants. Fernanda Wong, who made my winning Miss Montana USA gown, has made pieces for younger contestants as well as Gaspar Cruz, who typically works with Canary Designs LLC and his pieces are unique they're stunning they're one of a kind and I have to say they have some of the best construction I have ever seen in a gown but of course this is once again gonna come with a bigger price tag if you still want custom I do have contestants who go with a local designer to have their dress made or they really do their homework and they find factories and designers on eBay and Amazon and they go with that for their custom dress designer but you you really have to do your homework with those because there is that risk that you'll order a custom dress and the quality is not going to be up to your standard or it's not going to match the vision that you had for that dress. So just be really weary with those custom dresses if you are going to be going with a designer that you contacted through Amazon or eBay. If these options are still out of your budget, another thing I suggest is going on social media and if you see a contestant who seems to be about your daughter's size, contact them or their parent and ask if they're willing to sell that piece. Also look up Facebook resale sites, one of which is the glass slipper that I've seen girls have a lot of success with. I personally purchased gowns from pageantresale.com and you can also find wardrobe on apps like Poshmark or Mercari from people who are selling their pageant wardrobe. But if you also want to know places that I wouldn't recommend for you to purchase a gown from, I do have an episode all about that, which I will link right up here in the corner. So please check that out as well. Thank you so much for checking out this episode. If you're still lost and need more help with your pageant wardrobe and styling, I do offer wardrobe styling services. You guys can find that on my website, dannywalkerofficial.com. If you want some style inspiration, follow me on Instagram at dannywalker and at pageant access. And of course, if you guys loved this episode and want to see more content like it, let me know. Drop a comment below, like this video, share it with your friends who might get some use out of it, and of course, subscribe. I really appreciate it. I'm always looking for new ideas for content to bring you. I always want to bring value to your life. So if you guys have questions or want to suggest a new video, leave that in the comments section below as well. Until next time though, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it and I hope you tune into the next episode.